Hey guys, we're actually going to be talking about one of the Twitter polls that Jane recently posted up. He asked, you know, questions for all the coaches that follow me. Uh, all other factors being equal, would you rather a better communicator or a better, a more mechanical, uh, a more mechanical player on your team? And a lot of people follow Jane, right? So we have Overwatch League coaches that follow Jane who replied to this post. We had Overwatch League players, we had contenders players, we have contenders coach, we have open division players, we have open division coaches. So from all the way from the top of the pro scene uh, to, 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 to the amateur scene, to the semi-pro scene, and even I think some of the, the people who replied to this post are like uh, casual players, right? They, they, play, they play the competitive ladder, but they're not in like any tournaments. They play the game for fun, they grind the ladder, they want to improve at the game, not particularly Jane fans. So yeah, so many different answers. And I'm going to talk about this from the perspective of someone who has been through uh, Open Division to Overwatch League, right? So I'm going to talk about what I felt when I first started coaching and what the consensus I came to. And it's actually really different. So when I first started coaching a few first few months, I had... A, sing a single op I had opinion A for this question and then after like you know after like two years of coaching I ended up in the Overwatch League ended up in Contenders I had opinion B so yeah, let's take a look at okay so what we're going to do is we're going to take a look at some of the uh, the opinions from everyone else and there's no names these are just opinions there's, there are no names and I, I'm not going to put names I'm not going to say who's it what and of course if you want to find out you can just go check out the Twitter post on Jane's Twitter page, but honestly, it doesn't really matter, right? What we are trying to talk about is the concepts behind these opinions, and we're going to discuss a little bit about it. Because at the end of the day, when you're in, in the ladder, do you prefer like the widow that can headshot everything, or do you prefer the guy who can shot call his way through, right? Telling, ev tracking ultimates, telling everyone how to, exactly to play the team fight. All right, so let's let's start. So this there's this guy, the first guy, right? There's this guy. The first guy said, I'll break down a couple of ways. The first, I think, first he thinks that a amount of great shot caller, uh, communicator is far less than a amount of great mechanical players. So, mm, is this true? Hmm. See, this thing this thing differs like greatly because uh first of all, this is a coach, I believe, in contenders. And hmm. See, the way I look at it is, if I was trolling for an open division team, right, I'm trolling for an open div team, and I want to climb into contenders, I honestly wouldn't care much about communication. Yeah, and, 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 and this sounds pretty cynical, but as long as the person is not a complete asshat, right, this guy is not like, a com doesn't have like insane uh, attitude problems, this guy is not like an arrogant prick, he's okay, he doesn't need to be like, Gandhi or anything, he doesn't need to be like the most altruistic guy on earth, but he, as long as he's decent, decently hardworking, I'm fine with that. To me, what is more important in open division, in amateur tournaments, is how good you are. Right, how, just straight up how good you are. Because I've seen, I've been in teams, right, I've seen teams that has really bad communication. I swear, I swear to God, like the communication is, is so bad. They, they argue with each other. Have you seen people, they play in, they're playing in fights and they say, they're like, hey, fuck you, fuck you. And they start arguing while they're still playing and competing in the game. And I've seen teams that are really bad at communication, yet they do really well uh, in the tournaments they're in because they're just great players, right? We had like Anna who can sleep. Nano, uh, uh, blading Genjis. We had Genjis that can get like four kills every blade. It does, in the end, it doesn't matter how good a communicator you are if the other team is just better. Hands down. So for example, like if a Grandmaster team fight like a Midmaster team, like 3,700 team fight a 4,000 team, right? No matter how good you are at communicating, even if I teach you how to communicate like the entire year, right? It's it, it's going to be pretty hard to beat a team that has a significant, significantly higher mechanical skills. It, it's just really, really hard. It's, it, it's, it's just Close to impossible, right? Maybe some of you guys will say, no, 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 if they are playing GOATS in the current meta, the Diamond team might be able to beat the Grandmaster team. And maybe, maybe for GOATS, they can. Maybe, right? But the diminish, the, the return, the, it's insane diminishing return. I could coach it. I, I would probably have to coach like this Masters team for maybe like six months. And then they might be able to beat like the Grandmaster's team that has never played together. Might be able to beat. And even so, I probably just need 
two, one or two weeks to teach the basic fundamentals of communication structure for goats, and the grandmaster team will probably just start beating the master's team, just because the Zaya knows how to grab better, just because the Zaya can deal more damage every 10 minutes, just because the right hand can sh uh, hit his shatter more consistently, just because the supports can hit more shots, the consent can hit more people. It's ju that's just the case, right? And even more so, if you guys don't believe that, we can even extend like the difference. If we take like a master's team, and they fight six random Overwatch League players. Right? I just take any random Overwatch League player from any team, and then this Master's team fight the Overwatch League team. Do you think the Master's team will beat the Overwatch League? No, right? They'll get, they'll get spawn camp. They're going to lose really, really badly. So this is why mechanical skills is really, 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 really significant. Like, really, really significant. And communications, there is huge diminishing returns. And most of the time, uh, you need the fundamentals of being able to play at a certain level before you can even look at uh, short calling and communication, at least to me, right? If you try to find that, like, you try to find six really good communicator, uh, chances are you just had a very, very, you just have like a very cluttered uh, comms. I mean, everyone's just trying to speak, everyone's just trying to sh short call, everyone, like, too many cooks spoil the broth, right? And then you're gonna lose to the high, highly mechanical team. I can, sometimes they are kind of like a balance where you might want to find like one or two really vocal short callers. Uh, particularly in the support roles, right? Particularly if this guy's like a really good Mercy and knows how to short call, and this guy's a really good Lucio and knows how to short call, and then the other five you find, just, you just find the best players possible. Even if they are like, they don't speak, they don't say anything, you just find the best player possible. Yeah. So getting a good caller will give you a leg up on at least some teams at your level who wouldn't be able to match your calling. Eh, yeah, but... It's very rare, right, to find a team that's exactly your level. Most of the time, they're either mechanically better than you or mechanically worse than you. And the difference would, the mechanical difference would have to be really insignificant for your communications uh, to be strong enough to, to overtake this difference. So, yeah, I could, I mean, I can agree if the two teams are relatively similar in, in skill level, yeah, maybe, but even in open division right even in contenders the top contenders team and the bottom contenders team has like a huge different right uh contenders like the the pass of contenders the pass of contenders and the bottom of contenders there's a huge difference you have fusion university who 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 has like a 16th or oh, xl2 okay maybe not let's not use we can use this xl2 with a 16 4 map score you have fusion Uni with a 13 6 map score and then you have sky foxes with a 0 0 20 you have kungana with a 4 16 map score and the, the difference is really really stuck even in contenders and many times this difference even in the semi-pro scene is because of mechanical ability right fusion uni fusion university just has insane mechanical players alarm is uh, arguably the best in your time content uh, in north america contenders etc etc so mechanical skills is so important and communications is important, but with huge diminishing return, right? Even if you cap out your communication skills, if your Widowmaker just can't beat the enemy Widowmaker in a straight up deals, right? If your Widow fights their Widow 10 times and lose 10 times in a row, it doesn't matter how good your communication is, you're still going to lose to the Widowmaker because the Widowmaker is just going to kill everyone. Uh, what is the goal of the team as a whole? I would say if you want to be a stable, uh, good system, does communication structure give rise to a good system it does but see here here i have to be a little bit cynical once again esports is a very very uh it's a volcanic industry right it's, it's a very volatile industry uh players come and go coaches come and go uh, meta changes every so often so most of the time you 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 normally don't need a you normally don't intend for a team like teams generally don't stay together for long because if there are any good players in the team, they would move on to greater opportunities. And if a team stays together for like three to four seasons of contenders, then it's likely that in that team, either the players are not ambitious enough or they're just not good enough to move to a better team. That's why they're staying together. Because it's very, very unlikely. If you're like the top of contenders in North America, you move on to better things, right? If you're the top team in another team you move on you're either a two-way player or you move on to an academy team or something right uh there are some exceptions like in the smaller regions maybe the players are, has has a lower average skill but most of the time most of the time uh i think stability of a team is important but often overrated yeah 
I, I, that sounds kind of bad because I'm trying to say that a team doesn't need to be stable. But I think they need to be stable, but diminishing returns once again. Yeah, even if this team just get built for this but this single season and then move and then break up after the current season, uh, as long as it as long as it did what it was supposed to do. I mean, the best players in that team gets scouted to a, a better team, then the, pup- the purpose of that team is done. So it's kind, of, it's kind of hard to say that you want to get strong communicators just because you want a stable system in the long, in the long term. It's, it's pretty hard. It's, it's really pretty hard. Yeah. You would have to be the strongest calling to make the weaker team part of the team more cohesive. And here's the thing, right? If, if the team is strong and you have like two or three weak links, the weak links get kicked. Right, they are given maybe like one season to improve, and then they get kicked. And this is, this is the the, the harsh part about being in a high performance, uh, environment. And this is the same for traditional sports. If you do badly in soccer, in football, in whatever sports, you have maybe a, a short span of time to improve, and then you, there is a time. There will come a time where, uh, the team, the team managers and coaches will have the discussion whether you need to go, and they need to find someone better. Right? It it doesn't really benefit a team just to put so much coaching resources into you just spend like hours and hours trying to get you to improve and you're improving like at a, at a really really slow, slow pace they might just kick they, they might as well just kick you out and find like just an overall better player to take a place someone who can learn faster someone who already starts off with a higher baseline and then this guy also says that he also believes that in terms of being able to learn things it's much easier to improve as a player and learn what you're doing wrong mechanic. I really disagree with this like I really really disagree with this there are many many times uh, you just have players that starts off at like a really high baseline, right? They f- they come out from rank like like Jonah. They come he comes out from contenders and he's at this baseline. And there are other Zen players that spend a lot of time in contenders and they start at like a lot lower than Jonah. And it's it's going to be really really hard to teach a player how to beat Jonah. It's it's almost impossible. It's it it it's really 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 hard. So I wouldn't want to say that you either have it or you don't, but. Even in Overwatch League, there are huge difference in Zaya gameplay. There are huge difference in Reinhardt gameplay and huge difference in Winston gameplay. If you find the worst Winston and then you go into it thinking that you can train this Winston to be the best Winston in Overwatch League, uh, and contenders, all I can say is that it's it's it, it bothers on insanely impossible. I I think it's possible. I mean, I think it's very very possible to teach someone who is bad to become average or above average i think it's close to impossible to teach someone bad to become the best especially in a high performance league especially in a high performance league uh yeah so well that this sounds really cynical because yeah this sounds really cynical and it sounds like something a coach should not say because a coach should always go like everyone can improve to the top level and there are definitely exceptions right people who are really who starts off being really bad and improve to a top level of play, but these people are exceptions. These people are exceptions. So, yeah. Yeah. Even if there's, like, a guy who's the best in communicating in the entire Overwatch uh, ladder, and that guy's in Diamond, and he's really good, like, he's tracking ultimates to, like, 1-2%. He's, he's doing everything as well as possible. He's doing insane, but he can't get out of Diamond. I wouldn't want him in my grandmaster team. Right? I wouldn't want him to my grandmaster team. Even if I'm very convinced that this guy is the best shot caller in Overwatch history, I still wouldn't want him in my grandmaster team. He just wouldn't be able to win. <laughs> he just wouldn't be able to get the team to win. And and I would have to start thinking about whether it's worth it to get this guy in the grandmaster team. How long can I, will I need to spend? How much time and effort will I need to spend on him so that he gets to be grandmaster in mechanics? And if I have a tournament next month, or if I have a tournament uh, two months later, it just might not be enough time for this guy to hit Grandmaster. So it, it's just insane. You might as well just pull a Grandmaster player. If you give me like two years or something, then maybe I could pull this player in. But most of the time, it's not worth the time and the effort. And, and, and it's kind of like the sad truth of 
coaching, right? You kind of want everyone to start from a like a relatively high baseline, especially in the top leagues, like contenders and Overwatch League. So we have another reply that says, like you have another uh, comment that says, ideally I'd rather build around a talented shot caller, put some mechanical pieces around him and build a system from there. It's easier to read that mechanical play from your shot caller than it is to... See, this is exactly what we talked about. It's actually really, really hard. It's actually really, really hard. Unless your shot caller is only slightly worse uh, slightly like his mechanical skills is just slightly worse uh, but his shot calling is like way better then yeah sure maybe you get, get him but most of the time most of the times uh, the variance in shot calling isn't that high like it, it isn't like this guy is insane like an A and this guy is like a D right if that's the case then it's an easy choice but if the D shot caller like the, the guy who is pretty bad at shot calling is way better than the A guy I would still go for the D guy. So if one guy shot calling is like way better than the other guy, but the other guy mechanics is way better than shot calling, I would still go for like the guy who's good at the game. <laughs> I'll still, still go for the guy who's good at the game. Yeah, because in in two weeks, I think I can teach a team the fundamentals of target calling and shot calling. I don't think in two weeks I can teach... I don't think in two weeks I can teach Zaya how to bubble perfectly and consistently. That would need a longer span of time. I don't think in two weeks I could teach like a 4,000 Reinhardt how to become a 4,500 Reinhardt. That will take, once again, months of practice. So you just want to find a higher baseline. Highly raw and team dynamic dependent. This is a good answer. Having a vocal tank is so... Definitely, yes, sure. It's a good answer, but once again, in the top level of teams, in, a, in like the really tip top level, even if your tank is vo even if your tank is vocal, if your tank is not good enough and he's just getting he's just losing losing Earth Shadow, right? He can't block Shadow, he's just getting shattered every time, he can't land Shadow. I would still get for I'll still go for the Reinhardt that can do all that. Yeah, I'll still go for like the Winston that can kill people with Primal Rage. It's it's just the sad truth of Overwatch. Right. If that guy can do so much more than you, it doesn't matter how good your cons is. So if you are Winston or Ryan, you don't need to aim to be the best. You just need to make sure that your mechanical skills aren't so far behind uh, the others. So if your mechanical skill looks decent and it's comparable to the top, it's not as good, but it's close enough, then your shot, call then your shot calling comes into the picture. Otherwise, it's going to be really, really hard to... 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 to yeah, just to make the cho to make the choice for the shot caller. It's just really, really hard. Mechanics takes ages to train. Ah, there, there we go. Mechanics can take ages to train. Communication isn't something demanded for every role, and the basics are easy to train. Who, who, who said this? I'm going to check out the tweet. I, I, I copy and pasted a lot of things, but I can't remember who said this. Totally agree. Communicator, not a coach, but communicating to my team what I see, what is coming, and how to do if it has won me more games than popping up. I think this person is a casual player, as in... He plays the she, he or she plays the ladder, the competitive ladder, but uh, doesn't coach in like top open division or top contenders or top Overwatch league. Because most of the time, uh, the way this person phrases it sounds like it's from the ladder. Yeah, and it's true, right? If you are if you are a masters player in 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 a masters game, communicating is really really important. It gels the team together. But what if I take an Overwatch? Let's say you're a Mercy player, right? Or you're a Lucio player, and you're really good at communicating. And I take Savio B, or I take someone from the Overwatch League, like a, a really good D DPS player, and I put him in the Masters game. Right? No matter how good you are as a Lucio, no matter how good your communication is on the, as a Mercy, if that guy, that DPS player, will still shred everyone. See, that's the importance of mechanical skills. It's just... It's just impossible to win. He doesn't need to say anything the entire game. He does. He just needs to keep quiet, right? He will still win. So it's it's just it's just really tough. I mean, I coach an open division team. Uh, but comms. Oh crap! This thing this thing isn't copy and paste. Comms is a well thought plan and shot calls can win fights more often than mechanics. What you communicate is a product of a situation, while mechanical skills can be shut down. Yeah, I don't know. It's overly hopeful. So once again, when I first started playing, uh, when I first started coaching in the scrub cup, I was coaching like silver and gold player. I thought it was like a balance, right? I thought it was like a 50-50 thing. You want good mechanical players, you want strong shot callers. But I never thought about what I would have done if a really good shot caller uh, came into the trials, to, into a trials. Because, I mean, there's no trials in, uh, in scrub cup. You're just coaching the player that they give you. So maybe the I didn't think much about this concept. 
I went into open division and we started trolling on four players and this became really, really important. Did I want to get a person who calls a lot or did I want to get like the other player who was 500 SR higher? Right? And this, this happened because I was coaching a master's team and then there were people who were 3,700 and there were people that were 4,100. Do I get the 4,100 that doesn't say anything? that doesn't like talking, that is an introvert and is not comfortable with using comps? Or do I get like the 3,700 who, who's, really, uh, who's really happy and cheerful? See, once again, it depends on your goal, right? If you want to win, if my goal is to win open division, I will go for the 4,100 every time. If my goal is just to have fun with my friends, uh, you know, and everyone just to have fun screaming, I would think about taking the 3,700. And that open division team in particular was a team that had friends in it. Like, there were friends and they, were, they liked playing. That's why they scream, right? They're, they're not screaming to win. Even though they said winning was their priority, uh, they were also playing because it was fun to play Overwatch and to practice Overwatch and to improve. So at the end of the day, I chose the 3,700 player, but he was definitely worse than the 4,100 and definitely lowered the chance of the team of winning open division. Yeah, it's, it's like a sad truth, right? It's like, it's like a sad truth. Yeah, truth is often painful. I moved on after that. I moved on to like um another team that was higher on higher as like four thousand two hundred, four thousand three hundred, and their communications was atrocious. It was really bad, and people were arguing with each other. There were cliques forming in the team. It was just over, overall really really bad. But that team would still be able to just smash any other team in the country just because all the players in there were top 500. It doesn't matter whether the other team had is average out 4,100, 4,200 and have strong communicator. If everyone in this team is 4,400, 4,500, everyone's top 500, you're going to lose to this team. Straight up. It doesn't matter whether they're arguing, it doesn't matter whether uh, there's clicks forming, it doesn't matter whether everyone's quiet the whole game, you're going to win. That, that team is going to win. It doesn't matter. Just because they're, they're just too good. They're just way too good. So, yeah, this is sad truth. And you hit on the contenders, and uh, I hit on into contenders, and then I realized, yeah, I would rather just get six mechanical players, right? As long as they're, as long as they're not downright immature assholes, I'm gonna pick the best player straight up, and then I'll try to build a communication structure around it. We'll start slow. Uh, people shot calling might be really hard and tedious at first, but the players are good, and if you are good, you understand the game faster. Uh, you're gonna learn shot calling in a relatively short amount of time as well. Yep. Mechanics, way harder to train. Especially when you have six people, maybe all decent shot callers and all vocal, but all just relatively bad at the game. So anyway, that's that's my opinion. Uh, I f There might be other Overwatch League coaches or contenders coaches that have very different opinions. I can see, I can, yeah. I mean, even in the comments, you see like coaches, relatively big names that think, that feels that, uh, shot calling and communication is way more important, but I don't know, man. The more I see screams at the top level in contenders and Overwatch League level, the more I f I feel that it doesn't matter how you speak or how you how you communicate with the team. You just need to be really good at the game, right? That you just need to have a really high baseline, and a lot of things will fall in place. Yeah. Yeah, I might be biased though. I come from the LA Gladiators, so we have a mixed team, right? So communication in a mixed team is always going to be an issue. So if you have a mixed team, uh, chances are that uh, they feel that co uh, a mixed team feels that you don't need the communication isn't as much of a priority, right? That it can be trained, for example. Yeah. So mixed team with like China, Chinese, Korean, uh, Western players generally feel that it's likely for them to f to, to 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 have an opinion in which. Communication maybe isn't the strongest aspect, or communication is something that's easy to train, and mechanics is just something hard and fast and much harder to increase the skill cap of. Okay, anyway, this is, yeah, that's my opinion. And if you guys are interested in who said what, you guys can go check out Jane's Twitter. I am not too sure what Jane himself think about that particular question. So, yeah, okay, that's it for me.